Good day, grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson. In this lesson and in the rest of the lessons for this year until the 14th of November, we will only be revising maths paper two. So hopefully by the 14th of November, we are going to be seriously amazingly good at paper two papers. And what I've done is I have sourced a whole bunch of prelim exam papers and they are IAB exam papers because I do realize that the only people that are writing maths now are the IAB students. Um, so they are all old IAB, when I say old, I mean they were prelim papers. Um, so hopefully that you will find this useful. Right, so let's get started straight away. Now, it seems a bit strange that we're doing question five, but that's because the rest of this exam paper was actually done um, last week. So if you're looking for it, just go source it. It is in the video files. Right, so the question says, given one minus cos 2x plus sine 2x over one plus cos 2x plus sine 2x, is equal to tan x. It says prove the identity that this is equal to this. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is obviously remember that when we are proving identities that we need to go left hand side, right hand side. Okay, so obviously there's not much we can do with tan x except so sine x over cos x. Not much that we can do there. Okay, um, the only other thing I'm seeing here is that this is 1 minus cos 2x plus sine 2x and this is 1 plus cos 2x plus sine 2x. But other than that, I'm not seeing much. Now, I know that your formula, now another thing I need to go over with you is your formula for your sine 2x, cos 2x, etc. Remember that your formula for your sine 2x is sine 2x can be replaced to 2 sine x cos x. Okay, whereas your cos 2x, cos 2x has got three options. It can either be cos squared x minus sine squared x, or it can be 1 minus 2 sine squared x, or it can be 2 cos squared x minus 1. Okay, so I'm trying to think if there's something I can do with the cos 2x plus sine 2x. The reason I'm thinking that is because then you'd have the sum and difference of two squares, but it doesn't look like it. So let's have a look at the left hand side. Left hand side. We've got 1 minus cos 2x plus sine 2x all over 1 plus cos 2x plus sine 2x. So what I'd like to suggest is that whenever you do something like this, always change your sine to x's first. Okay, and then see what you're left with and see if there's anything you can play with before you start changing anything else, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do one minus cos 2x plus two sine x cos x. And similarly, I'm gonna change this to one plus cos 2x plus 2 sin x cos x. Okay, then I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, well, I know that cos squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. Do you agree? 1 is equal to cos squared x plus sine squared x. That's one of the identities. So if I change cos 2x to cos squared x minus sine squared x, maybe I can do something. So let's do that. And let's change 1 to cos squared x plus sine squared x. So let's do that. And you must remember that the whole point about these questions is that sometimes you just have to try different things and see what works. Okay, so let's try this. So it's going to go cos squared x plus sine squared x minus cos 2x, which we've decided we're going to use the top one, is going to be cos squared x minus sine squared x, okay, plus 2 sine x cos x, okay, all over the bottom one, 
cos squared x plus sine squared x plus cos squared x plus, oops, sorry, minus, um, erase, pen, minus sine squared x plus 2 sine x cos x. Okay, now because of these brackets, that affects the pluses and minuses here. So I'm not going to rewrite the line because it gets a bit busy, but I am going to erase that bracket and put a plus here because a minus times a minus is a plus. But do you see there we've got cos squared x minus cos squared x, so that cancels. And what do we have now? We now have 2 sine squared x plus 2 sine x cos x, okay, all over this sine squared x cancels with that sine squared x, and we've got 2 cos squared x plus 2 sine x cos x, and at this point I'm starting to get hopeful because it's starting to look like I might end up with a sine x over cos x. Do you see that you can take out a common factor of 2 sine x at the top? So let's do that, 2 sine x. And what are we left with? We're left with sine x plus cos x all over. And yeah, we can take out a common factor of 2 cos x. And what are we left with? We're left with cos x plus sine x. But does it matter if it's sine x plus cos x over cos x plus sine x? No, it doesn't because that's exactly the same thing. So therefore we can cancel that and we can cancel those two. So we're left with, yay, sine x over cos x, which equals the right hand side. Whoop, whoop. So actually this question wasn't that, what happened? This question wasn't that difficult. You just had to break it down and keep breaking it down into all the little bits, even though it was tedious and horrible to do. Okay, so it is doable. These questions are very, very doable. Okay, but now we haven't finished. And I'd like to point out grade 12 is that even if you couldn't prove the identity, you can still do the bottom bit because the bottom bit says determine all the values of x for which the identity is undefined. So in other words, they want to know when is this not working? So do you agree that this is the same as sine x over cos x? So therefore, it's undefined if 1 plus cos 2x plus sine 2x equals 0 or when cos x equals zero, okay? One of those two, if either of those two are true, then this is undefined. So do you agree that cos x is equal to zero if you think about the cos graph? Cos graph goes like this, wee. So therefore it is 90 degrees, cos x is gonna equal 90 degrees, and then plus or minus n 360 or k, whichever, because the period of the wave is 360, okay? Or it's going to be where x equals 270 degrees plus or minus k 360 degrees. And now we need to solve for this, okay? So now we need to find out when this would be undefined, the denominator. So I know that we simplified it to cos x, but let's see if we can make it a little bit easier for ourselves. This year, actually we don't have to do this because this we simplified to cos x. So the only thing you need to realize is that it's 90 degrees plus k360 or 270 plus k360. There we go, nice question that. Now it says simplify 4 sine 165 degrees 
multiply by cos 345, cos 33, cos 27, minus sine 33, minus, multiplied by sine 27. And I guarantee you that just above this, they said without the use of a calculator. So the first thing you need to draw when you're doing this is a cost diagram so you can get an idea of where you're at. And if you don't, that's know this. This is 0, 90, 180, 270, and back to 360. You also may need your special triangles, but we'll worry about that in a minute. So this is becoming 4 sine. Do you agree that's the same as 180 minus 15 degrees? This cos of 345 is the same as cos of 360 minus 15 degrees all over cos 33 cos 27 minus sine 33 sine 27. And I'm hoping you realize that that's a cos cos sine sine with a minus between it, which means it's the same of, as cos 33 plus 27. Okay, so what do we have? 180 minus 15 is in the second quadrant, and sine is positive there. So that's the same as 4 sine 15 degrees. Cos is positive in the fourth quadrant, and this is in the fourth quadrant. So this is the same as cos of 15 degrees. And now there's a little trick that we can use. Do you agree that sine 2a is the same as 2 sine a cos a? Okay, so do you agree that therefore we can say that if we take that across and we divide this by 2, then we've got a half times sine 2a is the same as sine a cos a. So I could change this this thing here to something along the lines of this. But first, let's just get rid of this, sort out the denominator. This is cos of 33 and 27 is 60 degrees. Okay. Right. Now, as I was saying, you would a half sign. Let me write it out here. A half sign. Okay, wait. Let's try it again. And we can actually erase the cost diagram. We don't need it anymore. And I'll change the color so you can see what's what. Okay, so you've got sine 2a is equal to 2 sine a cos a. Do you agree? So therefore, I can say a half sine 2a is just equal to sine a cos a. Do you agree? Therefore, if this is sine 15 and cos 15, I can go for times by a half times by sine 30 all over cos 60. Okay, because this would be sine a of 15, this would be cos 15, so when we double it up, it becomes 30. And now, I know that they're co-ratios, but just to make it, prove it to you, we've got 60, 30, 2, 1, root 3. So obviously a half cancel the form becomes 2 and we're going to write Sakatoa. Sine of 30 is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's a half over cos of 60, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is a half. So they cancel and the correct answer is two. There you go. So your final answer is two. Right, now let's move on to the next question. Okay, so this is a graph. Okay, and the first thing we notice is it says this cos 2x, which means that its period has shortened. Okay, it also says that it is going from x going from 270 to minus 270. Okay, so do you see that that there is one whole graph there? Okay, and normally if you think about it this way, I know what it is, the answer is, I'm just going to show you something. If you look over here, this would normally be 90, okay, 
180, 270, and 360. Okay, now they're saying all the way there is 270. Do you agree? So this is one wave, and then we've got another half a wave going through, okay? So what has happened is the period has halved. The period has halved, so the, for the period is now 180 degrees. So from year to year, that is 180. Okay, you with me? Now it says write down the range of f of x divided by 2. Well, the range would normally be 2. It would be from 1 to minus 1. But now they want the range of f of x divided by 2, which is going to be a half. So the range, the range of f of x divided by 2, be, divided by two would be from minus a half is small and equal to y is greater than equal to a half. Okay, now it says draw the graph of, hmm, let's choose a different color. They want g of x is equal to 1 plus sine x on the same system of axes. Okay, so now normally that's, not, that's 180, so this is 90, okay. So normally your sign graph would look like this, okay? It would normally look like this, right? And like this, um, and then like this, and then up like that. Okay, so that's normally what your sign graph would look like, agreed? But now what's happened is that we've moved it up by one. So we're normally at zero, it's now at one. Where it's normally at one, it's now gonna be at two. It's gonna be at two. Where it's normally at zero, it's now gonna be at one. And where it's normally at minus one, it's going to be at zero. Ditto, yeah, this is gonna go up. And this is going to go up. And this is going to go up. So this graph now looks like that. And we can erase the dotted line. Okay. I'll write the numbers in again, don't worry. Oh, so therefore the numbers are minus one, this is 90, 180, minus 90, minus 180. Okay, so there it is. It says show all the turning points and intercepts. So this is going to be 92, and this is going to be 270, 0. This is going to be minus 90, um, 0. And this would be minus 272. There we go, done that. Um, now it says solve for x if f of x equals g of x. So they're saying cos 2x is equal to 1 plus sine x. And they want us to solve for it, okay? Now you can see that there are multiple points. One, two, three places, at least three places, probably four. Um, One, two, yeah, there are quite a few places where this thing is going to cross, as my drawing looks. Not sure. Okay, right. So now, what do we need to do? We need to solve for this, okay? So we're obviously going to say cos 2x minus sine x minus 1 equals 0. But do you agree that cos 2x, if we relate it to x, sine x's, cos 2x is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x, okay? So I can replace this with 1 minus sine squared x minus sine x minus 1 is equal to 0. So happily the 1's cancel. So we've got sine squared x. Oh, why are you doing this? Sine squared x minus sine x 
equals zero. Do you agree we can take our common factor sine x? So we've got sine x equals zero or one minus sine x equals zero. Therefore, we can say that x is equal to um, second function sine of zero or x is equal to, I'm going to do this slower. Let me do this slower. And let me just erase this writing so it's out of the way. So therefore we can say that x is equal to second function sine of zero plus k360. Or we can say that x sine x is equal to one. Therefore, x is equal to second function of one plus k360. Okay, so now what we need to do is use our calculator. Okay, we're gonna go shift sine of zero close bracket equals a zero, which we knew. So therefore this, because it's that point there, therefore it's going to be zero plus K360, which is just three K360. I haven't finished, don't worry. I know about the intervals. Or, or it is going to be shift, yeah, shift sine of one close bracket equals 90. It's equal to 90 plus K360. So obviously the only answer here that we're gonna get is X equals zero within the bracket from minus 270 to 70. Yeah, X is equal to 90 is within the 270. So we've got, but, but we need to find another one. Sorry, I'm just looking at this and seeing it's wrong. The reason it's wrong is because it doesn't cross at 90, it crosses at 180. So I've done something wrong. Um, so let's see, cos 2x minus sine x minus one is equal to zero, right? Therefore, cos 2x is the same as one minus two sine squared x minus sine x minus one. One minus one is zero, so you got <gasps> minus sine squared x minus sine x. There we go. So this becomes minus sine x equals zero. That doesn't make a difference. Actually, it's sine x. This becomes minus one minus sine x. Therefore, sine x equals negative one. That's a negative one, and that changes. Yay, that's better. Okay, so <laughs> therefore we've got shift sign of negative one, which equals negative 90. Yay, that's much better. Um, which is the same as, yeah, your 180. So therefore X is equal to 180 plus or minus K360, which is going to be at 180 minus 180, minus 180, and then at zero. So you'll get yeah, your point zero there and the rest is just badly drawn. Okay, now we know. Now it says, okay, so now I'm going to just erase, no, I'm not gonna erase all the ink. I'm just gonna erase all this writing so that I can play with this a bit. So we have basically solved for X using the um, formula, but we could tell from the graph where it is actually equal. And you could tell from the graph that actually my drawings are bad and that the only places they touch actually at, yeah, at here and over here. Okay, now it says, use the graph to determine the values of x for which g of x minus f of x equals three between naught and 180. Well, do you agree that the only place that's gonna equal three 
is that gap there. So therefore, x is equal to 90 degrees. Okay, what they're saying is, when is the y value between them equal to 3? When is that so far apart that they're equal to 3? Finally, they want to know, they've got f of x multiplied by g of x has to be smaller than or equal to naught. In other words, either they must either equal naught or this must be positive and this must be negative or this must be negative and that must be positive. Okay, so let's follow that round, okay? So do you agree over here, up to this point they are both positive, but over here, f of x is zero, so that's a good start. Then it is negative all the way along there, but now they're both positive. So therefore, this is going to be true for x is smaller than or equal to halfway between 90 and 180 is 135, and greater than or equal to halfway between 0 and 90 is 45. There you go. Done. Right, now onto some circle geometry. Okay, please guys learn your theorems with your circle geometry. They love asking your theorems and your circle geometry. So please, please, please learn them. Okay, it says O is the center of the circle. Okay, so immediately we know that those are equal because they're the radii, right? A, B is 18, A, C is 14, and B, C is 8. It says calculate the size of angle B, A, C. Okay, so even though this has got a circle and it looks like circle geometry, we're actually using trig and we're going to be using the cos rule. The cos rule says a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So we've got the opposite side a, we've got b, we've got c. Do you agree we can get big A? No problem. So we're going to go a squared minus b squared minus c squared over negative 2bc is equal to cos a. Okay, so let's do that. So therefore, we've got that a is 8, so that's 64, minus b squared, I have no idea what 18 squared is, minus 14 squared, all over minus 2 times by 18 times by 14, and that has to equal cos A. So let's pop that into our calculator. So it's going to be a fraction, and it's going to be 64 minus 18, oh, delete, 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 minus 18 squared minus 14 squared all over minus 2 times 18, nope, 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 times 18 times 14 equals 19 over 21. Now we need to find the actual angle, so we're going to go shift, shift, no, we're still doing shift, shift, because of the answer, close bracket equals 25.21. So A is going to be 25,21 degrees. So this angle here is 25,21 degrees. Okay, now it says calculate the radius of the circle correct to one decimal place. So they want the radius, okay? But do you agree that we know that the angle at the center is twice the angle at circumference? So therefore, the angle at the center is going to be two times this, which is going to be 50, 42 degrees. So this angle here is 50, 42 degrees, right? So then, it's pretty easy to get the radius because we can call this x and we can call this x, right? And then again, we're going to use the cos rule, but we're going to do it slightly differently. We are trying to find x, okay? 
So we're going to substitute x's into it. Okay, so in other words, what we're saying now is 8 squared is equal to x squared plus x squared minus 2x squared cos a. Agreed? Therefore, 64 is equal to 2x squared minus 2x squared cos of 50 comma 42 degrees. Do you agree we can take out a common factor of 2? No, let's try again. Erase. Do you agree we can take out a common factor of x squared? And we're left with 2 minus 2 cos 50 comma 42 degrees is equal to 64. Therefore, x squared is equal to 64 divided by 2 minus 2 cos 50 comma 42. I've just rearranged it. I've kept x squared at the top and I've divided this into the bottom. So now we can use a calculator again. We can go 64 2 minus 2 cos 50 comma 4 2 close bracket equals but now that is x squared so we have to square root the answer and then it becomes 9.391 but they said to one decimal place so it's 9.4 so x equals 9,4 centimeters. Hmm, very nice question. And quite sneaky the way it looks like a circle geometry question, but in fact, it's actually to do with trig. Right, let's do this question. It says in the diagram, DBC, DBC is 90, okay? BCD, angle BCD, BCD equals angle C, A, E, and they're both alpha. Um, B, C, A is beta. Okay, and they tell you these are parallel, right? And D, B is X, the whole of the six. Okay, it says find A, B, C, A, B, C in terms of alpha and beta. Okay. Okay. So do you agree that if this is alpha and that's 90, this must be 90 minus alpha. How did I get that? Angle C is going to be 180 degrees minus 90 minus alpha because of the angle sum of triangle, okay? Which is going to be 90 minus alpha. So therefore C is equal to 90 minus alpha. But therefore, B, A, C, B, A, C is also 90 minus alpha because they're alternate angles. So therefore, this is 90 minus alpha. Therefore, angle, what did they want? A, B, C. A, B, C. A, B, C is 180 degrees minus beta minus 90 minus alpha which becomes 180 minus beta minus 90 plus alpha. So this becomes 90, 180 minus 90 is 90, minus beta plus alpha. So B is 90 minus beta plus alpha. Okay, everybody's happy with that. So this is 90 minus beta plus alpha. Now it says prove that AC, that's this line here, is equal to X multiplied by cos beta over tan alpha plus sine beta. Okay, so the first thing you always do is look for a bridge. And the bridge between this triangle, okay, and this triangle here is this line here. So we need to relate CB somehow to X 
and to alpha, but that's a right angle triangle. Do you agree? So we can use Sakatoa. Okay, this is the angle, so that's alpha. So this is the opposite side, and this is the adjacent side. So we're using tan. So we can say tan of alpha is equal to the opposite side, which is x, over the adjacent, which is bc. Okay, so therefore, do you agree that bc is equal to x over tan alpha? So now we've got the yellow line. Okay, now we want somehow to relate the yellow line to the blue line, to AC. Okay, so do you agree we could use the sign rule? We've got this side and we've got its opposite angle. We've got this angle so we can get this side. Okay, so we could say AC over sine of B is equal to BC over sine of A. Okay, but now to make it easier for us to see, I'm going to erase this, all this writing up here so that I can carry on with the sum up there. Oh dear, it's okay. I can read. I can read it. So sorry, I forgot that I needed this. So we've got tan of alpha is equal to x over BC. So therefore, BC is equal to x over tan alpha. There we go. Problem solved. Okay, so we want AC. So AC over sine of wait for it. 90 minus beta plus alpha is equal to, uh, wait, BC over sine of 90 minus alpha. Okay. But AC, okay, so then we've got AC is the same as, this is the same, 90 minus beta plus alpha is the same as saying sine of 90 minus beta plus alpha. Okay, right? 90 minus beta plus alpha, which is equal to BC over sine of 90 minus alpha. Okay, getting there. So do you agree that AC is equal to BC? Sine, sine of 90 minus alpha is the same as cos multiplied by cos of beta plus alpha all over sine of 90 minus alpha. Unfortunately, grade 12s, I have to stop now. Um, it's a bit sad, but we will continue with this tomorrow. Um, if you want to, feel free to work ahead and try and finish the sum. Have a great day.